I should never watch a Battle of the Belts and feel like, why did I watch that? Like, yeah. There was no reason whatsoever to watch that. There was no angle. 100%. There was no title change. How come the show that is supposed to be special that only airs three, maybe four times a year has a lesser lineup than the one that's on every week? It's a show thrown together looks like at the very last minute where they just drew names out of a hat. You're not going to make people watch it by advertising championship matches because you have championship matches on every single show. Right. The only way that you're going to get people to invest in this show is if they're pretty much guaranteed that there's going to be a title change every time there is one. 20 minutes of greatness. Loved it, loved it, loved it. I have absolutely nothing bad to say about this match, except... Tony Khan building it up really big as his dream match that he had to tune in to see. And match was awesome, but I mean, this was not a dream match. This was just a great match. Sky Blue versus Holly Hood Haley. I would also still ditch the Scooby-Doo gear. That's got to go. The mystery machine, specifically. Yeah. The lights went out, and the devil appeared on the screen, and nothing happened. No. <laughs> cool. Jeff Jarrett versus Eddie Kingston in a Memphis street fight. The great Dave Brown on commentary. I loved this. I don't give a shit Same. what anybody says. I've never got this storyline. And the more people try to explain it to me, the more fucking frustrated I get. Okay, would you I don't ever mind? want to talk about these people again in my life. Uh, Where does God play into this? They have not mentioned God in a while. Even God got bored and left. You know what people are talking about right now? Well, they're talking about what Tony Khan is going to get Sting tomorrow. We were thinking about him wheeling out some of his famous opponents, like Flair, and like Flair, and like Flair. And Tony Khan is going to bring in the other Sting to record new theme music. That'd actually be pretty cool. Yeah. Every bump you take. What a rib that <laughs> would be. Will my gift to Sean be better than Tony Khan's gift to Sting? Yes. And, uh, Sean, you need to do me a favor. Yes, sir. Oh. Will you carry my belt? <laughs> <laughs> I've done this before. Hey, wait a minute. What? That's a new one. What is this? What do you think it is? Is this for me? What? Yes, yeah, for you. It's your birthday <laughs> present. And MGF doesn't have a partner, and he handed you his Ring of Honor World Tag Team title. And so I think that you are now one half of the Ring of Honor Tag Team Champions, Sean. Granny, if you could play Scrabble with anybody famous besides The Undertaker, who would you like to play Scrabble with? Sam says Pat Sajak. He's too old. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Granny, if Brian was a candy slash candy bar, what type would he be? Uh, Mr. Good Bar. <laughs> really? <laughs> I'd say Mounds. How dare you? You know, because... Almond Joy has nuts. And... Anyway. Mounts does not. Yeah. Brian. Thanks. Yeah. I was going to tell about all the pets we had and all the bad things that happened to them. Um. Which wasn't our fault, but I was advised not to tell it. Okay. All right. Well, we can skip that, that one this week. I was trying to find a match between Undertaker and John... And an Eric or whatever. <laughs> Heidenreich. Heidenreich. Oh, Be because he's he like was so John vicious. And Eric. And an Eric. How come my nose looks white? Uh, probably because you got the computer screen really bright and your nose sticks out more than anything else on your face because it's a nose. Hey, a couple of weeks we got that granny birthday celebration we're going to do, granny. What do you want to do here on the show that day? Cry. <laughs> Get out of here. <laughs> All right. Woo. Craig is asking if he's muted. Yeah. You there? Hello. Oh, hi. <laughs> <laughs> I, thought, I thought you just had nothing to say. I'm sorry, Craig. He has exactly one facial expression: eyes half closed, mouth wide open. That's how he's social wow. control. That's I how he's he was get, all right. That's how he gets angry at the ref. Yeah. That's how he gets pissed off. He lost. Lawler goes up top for the hip hop drop. Out comes Six Pac and April, and they start. Having sexual intercourse right there on the stage. He's eating her face. He's grabbing her ass. Because it's TNA, you see. Brian Lawler is standing on the top rope, and he's doing his Brian Lawler face. When, he, when he's doing the face on the top rope, they do like a shot like you're watching right now in video. It's just like from here. He's going, ah! Right when he has to crotch himself, they cut to the fucking hard cam. So you see the guy in the top rope, and he goes, oh! And jumps and crotches himself and falls off. The perfect... Angle to show you that he did it on per- I'm- Oh, God. 
They did 30 minutes with MJF at the beginning of the show. They go to commercial. And as they go to commercial, I went, my God, that was 30 full straight minutes of MJF content. And so they come back from commercial, and it's a Wardlow promo. Yes. <laughs> talking about MJF. And I swear to God, I laughed. I was like, <laughs> oh my God, they're going to go two full hours. The MJF show. But they did not. So now, they're going to have a title shot on Collision in three days. In Connecticut, which made me laugh. So he's got a title match, a tag title match, an eight-man, and another title match on the horizon. When this was done, my head was totally swimming. I was completely exhausted. <laughs> and I was so happy they went to commercial. This show did not do a good rating. And when the first half hour ended, this show fell from 9.36 to 7.52. Hmm. They lost almost 200,000 viewers after the first half hour. Tony's gone to the well one too many times with this giant announcement. We've got this huge announcement. This big thing is going to happen. We've, we've heard it a thousand times. I think the show was good. I liked all of the segments in a vacuum. But the fact of the matter is, as far as like, you know, the sequential telling of all of the stories what in god's name is going on with the young bucks i have no idea we had another biggest announcement in the history of whatever with sting and like people didn't tune in for that what is the hikaru shida story there is no story it does not exist rob van dam and hook team up every now and then when they're in rob van dam's neck of the woods for what they faced silver and reynolds for what what's the point of any of this there's no story here. They're not telling the stories in a way that's getting people to tune in to find out what's next. And so I think that there's there's a lot of work that needs to be done overall on the storytelling here. Outside of, obviously, MGF's five storylines. So yes, Tony Khan's special gift for Sting is he got him a nature boy. Man, he looked like he would had no, absolutely no idea. He looked like he thought Flair was dead and Flair came out. I don't know about that. The match was awesome. They kept... Danielson and Okada apart the entire time as long as they possibly could. And now finally it's Danielson versus Okada. And they stare each other down from the apron. Everyone jumps to their feet for this. And we got like four minutes of a one-on-one -on -one Danielson Okada match. And it was awesome. Lance and I had an argument quite a while ago actually. And he's gonna he's gonna text me and he's gonna call me an idiot and he's gonna say he's right all along, but he wasn't. And uh and his argument was that like AW doesn't tell stories. They just book matches to set up other matches. And, uh, and that's what they do. But when you watch this show, this is exactly what he's talking about. This promotion needs more weekly, episodic storytelling. Whatever you think about NXT, what you cannot say is they do not have weekly, episodic storytelling. That's true. The matches are nowhere near as good, for the most part, as AEW matches. But man, you watch this thing for three weeks, and you know all the storylines, and every week there's a follow-up to all of them. The MVPs of the show were Shotzi and Scarlett and whoever helped them design and change costumes. Lexus looks into the camera and says, Brian Pillman is dead. Long live Lexus King. So I thought it was interesting because the whole storyline has been how everyone loved Brian Pillman, but Lexus wants to be different. And then Booker just starts burying Pillman. Yeah, that was something <laughs> else. He goes, you know, I never really liked that guy. Yeah. It's like, wow. Okay. Uh, Mr. Stone goes to visit Von Wagner. This was heart-wrenching. <laughs> This is storytelling. You may not like it. You may watch it and go, this is so fucking hokey. But it fucking works. Creed's interrupt. They want to match with the Garzas. Yeah, I got in big trouble about this one. Uh oh The Creed showed up and they were dressed as nerds. I, I, I was alerted they weren't in costume. Oh, come on. Mm -hmm. Brutus was halfway dressed like Pennywise. Well, uh, apparently that's uh, that's Julius's normal attack. Well, I, I will tell you exactly what I wrote down here. And I called him a nerd. Well, he's going to kill you. I need to avoid these NXT shows, apparently. Yeah. So, man, when he rolled up Tony D and pinned him, this fucking place, they just were like, oh, what? And they start holding their face like, oh, my God, they actually won. And everybody's going crazy. This was a great, I would call this an upset because I, you know, oh, that, yeah. it's fake. But, like, I don't think anybody thought Chase U was going to win. This was another one. I thought, there's no way that Lyra is beating Becky. But uh, then they show these people in the bar in Ireland, but they're all at the bar 1 or 2 o'clock in the morning live. Man, I hope I hope Last Call hasn't started, because they're going to fucking be drinking here in a while when she loses this match. Little did I know. I wish, goddamn, 
They, they should do a documentary on that bar. The crowd after the match, they're now clapping and hooting along to Lyra's song. They're totally in her now. You can't deny she's a much bigger star than she was like a month ago. This whole thing was very, very, very effective. So Becky t- takes the belt. Not hers anymore. And she eyeballs Jade. Their crawls will pass. Paths will cross. Their what? Their paths will cross. What the be. hell did you say? Their craths will pass? I, I, I said words that do not exist. <laughs> yeah, that was fucking weird. You I all was, right over there? I hope so. 